Now, it's being reported tonight that Diane Abbott, the first black woman elected to Parliament, will not be allowed to stand as a Labour candidate in the general election. She had been under investigation for alleged anti-Semitic comments, but another prominent Labour MP found out today she is in the clear. Greater Manchester Police said they would take no further action against the party's deputy leader, Angela Rayner, over the sale of her council house in Stockport nine years ago. Our political editor, Gary Gibbon, joins us from Westminster. Gary. As you said, uh, strong reports tonight that Diane Abbott's Commons career could be uh, coming to an end. Obviously a celebrated figure uh, on the left uh, as the first black woman MP celebrated uh, across uh, political parties. But her crime in the eyes of the uh, leadership of the party last year was to write a letter to the Observer likening uh, the discrimination that Jewish people feel to that of uh, people with ginger hair. She apologised, but she has not uh, as yet been uh, allowed to stand and strong story suggestions tonight uh, that the party leadership will not let her stand as a, a candidate. There was always a suggestion this is where this would end up and that behind the scenes the leadership had been saying to Diane Abbott, look, go quietly, stand down, we'll restore you to the uh, Labour whip, you will restore your Labour membership, uh, your dignity as it were, but just go quietly and the Labour leadership would then have the opportunity to put their own candidate uh, in her seat. I should say that as of this moment, uh, Labour figures are not confirming this story. It seems as though it might have a couple more uh, uh, twists to go, but the direction of travel uh, it must be pretty likely that it ends up uh, where those uh, suggestions are in the Times newspaper tonight. Right, but good news for Angela Rayner. Yes, uh, she was under investigation for Greater Manchester Police uh, uh, over this whole business of whether she had uh, avoided uh, capital gains tax on the uh, sale of a second home. Not quite clear why Manchester uh, Police think they've got any uh, remit to look into tax matters. Uh, and, and whether she'd uh, registered at the right home under electoral law. Well, that law had uh, uh, long since passed the statute of uh, uh, limitations, uh, given when this alleged incident might have happened. So there was bafflement, really, as to what Greater Manchester Police was up to. They said they felt that there was a public interest in looking into this, but they've said uh, they, they can find no evidence of criminal acts. They then said at the end of their statement, but we passed on the files or, or relevant information to HMRC and Stockport Council, but both of them have come back uh, immediately uh, and uh, said they don't think there's anything to investigate. So this whole saga, uh, which had put a bit of a cloud over Angela uh, Rayner, uh, seems to have uh, come to an end. And here was Keir Starmer's uh, reaction on the campaign trail. I'm obviously pleased that they've come to a conclusion. I never doubted that Angela hadn't done anything wrong um, and now she's been completely cleared by the police. And that means that um, Angela can be campaigning with us. This is an important moment for the country. But the day was really dominated on the campaign trail by Rachel Reeves' speech, her uh, uh, shadow Iron Chancellor uh, in waiting routine, but also uh, by the Tories publishing yet again, they're almost doing it in instalments, another policy uh, from their manifesto, this time a promise to pensioners. The Prime Minister campaigning in Leicestershire was pushing his commitment to raise the pensioners' tax-free allowance to make sure the basic state pension doesn't get taxed. Today what we've announced is the Triple Lock Plus. We're going to increase the personal allowance for pensioners, delivering a tax cut worth around £100 to millions of pensioners, demonstrating our commitment to them. The Independent Institute for Fiscal Studies said the Tories were effectively reversing some of their own earlier tax grabs. This government was freezing, or well, its policy until today was to freeze that allowance in cash terms, therefore dragging more and more people into tax. So a lot of what they've announced is just undoing a tax rise they had previously announced. And secondly, of course, we used to have a higher personal allowance for pensioners than for people of working age, and it was this Conservative government that got rid of that additional um, allowance, and that's one reason why actually already a lot more pensioners are paying tax Labour's top team campaigning in Derby said they couldn't match the promise and the Tories were being reckless. 
Rishi Sunak is singing from the same songbook as Liz Truss with making unfunded commitments around tax. That is the road to economic ruin. The Tories insist they can afford to raise pensioners' tax allowances by tackling waste in government and reallocating some levelling up funding. Some of these pensioners in Bolton seemed underwhelmed by the Tories' pension offer. Well, of course, they think that the pensioners are the ones who go and vote. They can rely on the pensioners to get out there. But um, I don't think it's the right thing. There, you know, there are other things, like education. It's a last-ditch attempt at uh, uh, trying to get some votes to look respectable. But I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> Lib Dem said Davy was campaigning on water quality issues on Lake Windermere. His party had recently been highlighting the prospect of pensioners being dragged into paying income tax. I don't think pensioners or anyone else is going to be fooled by the Conservatives having broken their promise, having raised taxes, now suddenly, just before election, saying they're going to do something different. Ed Davies said voters must wait for his party manifesto to hear their full tax promises. The Tories look like continuing to publish chunks of their manifesto each day. Labour, instead, was showing off an endorsement from 120 business leaders, including bosses from retail, car manufacturing and one childcare company with a connection to the Sunaks. Well, I think it would be good if Labour was clearer on what they want for childcare. I mean, I'm very clear about what we need for childcare. We need much more support for flexible childcare for parents. We need better SEND provision, special educational needs provision. I'd love it if they would bring back Sure Start. They haven't been specific on any of that stuff. A while ago, uh, Rishi Sunak uh, was told he should have declared a family interest in your company. His wife was a seed investor. She owned about 1% and uh, she's now donated her shares and it was... Her, um, it was her thought, uh, but I, I tend to agree, that it just became a massive distraction. There might be some hard feelings in 10 Downing Street tonight if they saw your name in that list. She was a seed investor. Well, I mean, we, we, we do what we think is right for the country. Try getting money out of Rachel uh, in a hurry and you'll just see how... No, but just because Rachel... Keir Starmer making light of his party's tight costings for government. Rachel Reeves said she would not be announcing more tax rises in this campaign beyond those already published and would not be holding an emergency summer budget if elected. Well, before the Diane Abbott developments emerged, I spoke to the Work and Pensions Secretary, Mel Stride. Given the announcement that police have dropped the investigation into Labour's deputy leader, Angela Rayner, I began by asking him whether the Conservative Party now owe her an apology. No, I don't think so, because uh, my understanding is what the police have said is that they're passing some information over to the local authority, and that might be for issues around council tax, and over to HMRC, which of course might be for issues around uh, taxation. So uh, the police have said they've got no further interest in it, which is... Which so is so she didn't break the law. Um, and Keir Starmer well, was right, it turns well, out, not to look into the well, details well, uh, himself. Uh, as I say, information has been passed over to the local authority and passed over to HMRC. That to sounds like you're trying to carry on the smear. Well, no, I, I'm not at all. I'm just stating the facts of the statement that the uh, Greater Manchester Police have issued. I mean, that is what they have stated. I mean, don't, don't you think it's been a, it's not been a, a good thing in politics to have these kind of personal attacks, um, which are just designed to sort of attack. Uh, an individual. It's an ad hominem attack well, rather that's than the, a policy attack. Well, that's the way you're presenting it. I think it did surface some issues that needed to be looked at. The police have done that, and as I say, they have passed. But what was the thing that you thought she'd done wrong? Because James Daly would I'm never not, say. Christian, I, what I, she I'm, not, I'm not going to sit here and dissect all the intricate ins and outs of, of, of this issue, other than to say that the police have made a very clear statement, and what they have said is that they have passed information on now to the local authority and they have passed information on to HMRC. And that's what we know at this time. Right. Now, on policy, you've decided yeah. to reverse one of your tax policies with regard to pensioners. Um, have you given up trying to win the election? No, not at all. I mean, is, is this just a core vote strategy, go, go for the no, old no, no. people? No, what we've done already, Christian, as you will know, is we've slashed national insurance, employ uh, employees' national insurance by a third. Uh, that has benefited, already is benefiting, 29 million 
working people. What we're now doing is, given what uh, the current taxation arrangements are as uh, applied to pensioners, what we're saying is going forward we will be bringing in measures which we're calling the triple lock plus, yeah. which will increase the personal allowance, i.e. the amount that you can earn without paying any income So it will tax exempt pensioners from line. the fiscal drag it, that everyone else is so, paying. So what, what, that will do, what that will do is mean that pensioners both don't have to be pulled into tax if it's just the yeah. state pension that's their income, uh, and equally it will be a tax cut of hundreds of pounds for pensioners. But this is just a Conservative U-turn. It was George Osborne who changed the rules on yeah. pensioners' tax thresholds, and now you're just kind of like, he, he brought them down, then you put them up, and now you're pulling them down no, again. You, you've been around. You're going long. around in circles. You've been around long enough to know that taxes move in all sorts of directions over many years, and indeed... Uh, they, 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 so they you are going around in circles, so, aren't you? No, not on at this all. Particular no, issue. not at all. What we have done is we have cut for working people, 29 million, we have had a huge tax cut. What we're now doing is we're making absolutely certain that we provide tax cuts to pensioners over the coming years. Why are pensioners who just had a £900 increase in their pension more deserving than single mothers or, sing or, or working couples who are going to food banks, who are desperately trying to make ends meet yeah. and are trying to do the right thing by going to work? This government has a very strong track record in bearing down on poverty, so we've seen a reduction in poverty of over a million people yeah, but you're since favoring 2010. Wealth and pensions. And for example, through the welfare system for which I am responsible as Secretary of State, there are many different ways in which we uh, intervene through cash transfer payments, through tax breaks and so on, through increasing, for example, the national living wage. Yes, which but you're is giving the pensions those. more today. That's so, your big policy. Well, you're uh, not giving struggling if you, parents if you were or single mothers more. You're giving the pensioners, Christian, if you, many if you, of whom are very rich. OK, if you were interviewing me a little while ago, you would be saying, look, you're giving all these huge tax breaks to those that are in work and of working age. What are you doing about pensioners? Well, today we've answered that question. I'm asking you, why is a millionaire pensioner more deserving? We, we've made it very clear that pensioners really matter to this government. We were the ones I that guess brought they it. They matter to the Conservative we, Party. They always that's have the truth, done. No, no, no. They, because they, they are you know the people who vote. Matter, and Christian, that's what this is about. Do you know how much they matter to the Labour government? The last Labour government gave us a 75p pension increase. Yeah. They also raided private pensions to the tune of £118 billion. And do you know what the result of that was? The fourth highest pension of poverty in the whole of Europe. We have taken and a an apology from the Labour government. I we know. Have, yes, but but give them half a chance and they will do it again. That so, is the point. So, so you're, you're proving my point. To, this is no, a I core vote strategy for older voters no. who vote. This is and for, for young people. You're saying you go off and join the army. Older voters no, no, here no, have a tax no, no. break. I think you're mixing up it's several. It's so things transparent. There. No, no, you're, you're mixing up several different things there. We we believe that pensioners matter. We always have done, which is why we brought in. Uh, the triple lock in the first place. It's added to the state pension £3,700 since 2010, but we're going further still with pensioners to make sure that they don't pay tax if they're solely reliant on their state pension, and if they do pay tax because they have other forms of income, then we're giving them a tax cut. Mel Stride, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And of course, it's worth updating you that since that interview was done and Mel Stride talked about the Angela Rayner files being sent off to the local authority and the HMRC, both those authorities have said um, there's nothing to look into as far as they're concerned. Well, our economics correspondent, Helia Ebrahimi, was at a Rolls-Royce factory in Derby today where Labour's shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, was speaking to business leaders, and she's with me now. What did you find out? Well, first of all, I asked her about this new pensions pledge, and she was very quick to back it, uh, bat it away. You know, Labour are desperate to avoid any kind of fiscal promise beyond the very small announcements that they've already made, things like VAT on private schools. But remember, in the context of a £2.8 trillion economy, that's all small beer. And I think, Chris, the question is, will they be able to maintain stability is all we need for the next five weeks? Well, what did you learn today about their increasingly cosy relationship with business? Well, that has created quite a backlash. Now, Labour are very happy to take the mantle from the Tory party. They see it as a bit of a coup. But unions are far less comfortable. Now, in my interview, Rachel Reeves does give quite a robust response, saying it will she will be responsible for the biggest expansion of workers' rights. Of course, until there's legislation, that could be a point of conflict in any new Labour government. The last thing to look out for is on austerity, because she's very categoric in saying there won't 
won't be any austerity under her. So the question is, how will her sums add up? And I think she's hoping that a little bit of confidence, confidence from business, confidence perhaps from the Bank of England, perhaps in the OBR forecast, will all snowball and give her the growth she needs. Let's have a listen in on the interview. It's all about engineering growth. Perhaps that's why the would-be Chancellor used Rolls-Royce as the backdrop for her opening salvo in this campaign. Well, I'm practically minded because I want to get stuff done. I want to see our economy achieve the potential that it has. I'm but doesn't in Rolls-Royce today. Public services doesn't that mean you know things like prisons and courts? They're crying out for change. Well, I'm not going to do a Rishi Sunak and tell you everything is fine in our public services. It's not. But in the end, you have to grow the economy. And that's been the missing ingredient from the Conservatives the last 14 years. At first, austerity that choked off growth, uh, then Brexit without a plan, and then Liz Truss's mini budget, which I... sent family finances into, uh, into disarray. I want to talk to you about austerity because you seem to be ruling out a budget until at least September. Can you afford to wait that long? Well, first of all, we have to win the election. And then there is a process, and I've been really clear that I won't do a budget or a fiscal event without an independent forecast from the Office what of Budget What about the issue of austerity? Because the IFS has warned that there is austerity level department cuts coming down the track. Is this still going to happen under your watch? We would have an immediate injection of cash into our frontline uh, public services, but then a comprehensive plan for growth backed by business. We had 120 businesses today uh, signing uh, uh, a letter endorsing a Labour government. The problem is that there's a hole in the public finances. The IFS says either the next government will have to borrow more, cut spending or get lucky with the economic forecasts. I just want to take you up on that IFS issue because are you saying that those settlements for departments will not go down to austerity levels? You would not allow that to happen? We will not be returning to austerity under a Labour government. I'm very clear of that. Uh, austerity choked off growth and it sent our public services to the condition they are in uh, today. Uh, we have fully costed and fully funded plans to create that immediate injection into our frontline public services. And you're an economist. Why don't you take a leaf out of the Keynes book? The facts have changed. Why doesn't Labour change with it? Why have you shackled yourself to fiscal rules that many economists agree will not produce the kind of growth that you're talking about, bringing wealth and prosperity and security to so many households? The reason that we will introduce uh, the, uh, tough uh, spending rules, the reason we will introduce a fiscal lock and respect the independent economic institutions is because stability is so important and stability is change after 14 years of chaos and decline. That stability is what the businesses who have backed Labour today are looking for. But unions worry about the cost of this allegiance for workers' rights. Do you understand the anxiety of unions that they worry now there is nobody fighting the corner of workers? So being pro-worker and being pro-business are not two different things. They're two sides of the same coin. What about workers' rights? Because people like Unite say that it's a betrayal, that it's been watered down to a consultation. Well, other trade unions are backing Labour's New Deal for working people, and it's the biggest expansion of workers' rights in a generation. We've committed to um, get rid of uh, exploitative zero-hour contracts, to uh, end fire and rehire, and to introduce a genuine living wage. Those commitments are not ones that the Conservatives are willing to make. But Conservatives were making promises on pensions today, something Reeves dismissed. Today is just another desperate gimmick from the Conservative Party that have taken taxes to a 70-year high. I want to bring taxes down for families and for pensioners as well. But unlike the Conservatives, I'm not willing to make spending commitments or tax commitments without saying where the money is going to come from. Of course, many a politician may look longingly at Royals Royce, a heritage brand enjoying a turnaround that's seen its shares soar. The question is whether anyone in Downing Street can pull this off for the whole British economy. Hello, Ibrahimi there. Now, Reform UK's Nigel Farage has called for the rising levels of channel crossings to be declared a national security emergency. 
Mr Farage, who isn't a candidate in the election, also defended comments he made over the weekend, claiming that a growing number of Muslims do not share British values. Our senior political correspondent, Paul McNamara, spoke to him after his campaign event in Dover, and Paul joins us now. Paul. Yeah, look, there were two things of note today. Firstly, last week, Reform had their election launch. It was led by their leader, Richard Tice, a millionaire businessman, and he spoke about a one-in-one-out migration policy, but he also spoke about the economy, taxation. Today, there was none of that. They came to Dover, the fulcrum of the small boats crisis, and all they spoke about was migration. And the person delivering that message was Nigel Farage, which meant, point two, with him came a bigger audience, more people in the crowd, more cameras. And all this for a man who isn't even standing to be an MP. On the whole, reform is polling above 10%, almost as high as 14% uh, in, some, in some cases. Reform Party believes that more Farage means more voters. But you can expect with more Farage will come more of that core messaging. And then we're oh, come on. On the count of three. Eight <laughs> years on. Brexit! <laughs> same topic from the same man, but the party's changed. Hobnobbing with Reform Party candidates in Kent at noon. Before that... He was making his grand entrance to this election, speaking for the first time on his chosen everybody. topic. Welcome to Dover. Welcome to the front line of the great national debate on immigration, both illegal and legal. After seven losses, Reform's honorary president isn't running for a parliamentary seat himself. The party's polling consistently over 10% and say they have a bold vision for the future. Plans to scrap net zero targets and end NHS waiting lists within two years, neither of which were the focus of today. I've seen your draft manifesto. There's lots of tax cuts in there, 40,000 new police officers. Yet in your first intervention, the message that you're out here selling is all about migration. I think the effect that's having on people's lives is the biggest single issue, even if Labour and it's Conservatives... It's the biggest single issue. You go polling shows that it's the NHS and the economy that's ah, the biggest issue. Ah, right. So is there a link between the population rising by 10 million and not getting GP appointments? Well, you said I would the suggest... biggest issue. The biggest issue yeah. is the economy and the NHS. Yeah. Migration is third. The biggest issue for the NHS is the population explosion. The biggest issue for housing is the population explosion. The biggest issue for infrastructure is the population explosion. In fact, you can go down the biggest a issue list... Biggest issue for the economy? As li yes, and what's happened? It's extraordinary, isn't it? We've imported millions of people in to do low-paid jobs, and guess what's happened to our productivity? It's gone through the floor. I'm talking to you about three-quarters of a million net coming into Britain. That's why I believe this is at the root of so much that needs to be sorted out. You're weaponising these numbers, aren't you? No, I didn't want these numbers. This is what the Conservative government's given, us, uh, given to us. Reform a fielding candidates in all seats in England, Wales and Scotland. But it's places like Hartlepool and a few dozen other locations their effect could be felt most. Possibly splitting the right-wing vote, easing the way for Labour. Well, that's the thinking, at least. Now it's called Reform. They're that's trying it. to do well here. Well, I hope they do. <laughs> I totally support Nigel, but I'm afraid he's still back in the lows nose. One of the parties that also has their eye on here is Reform UK. Which yes, absolutely possible? not. Why, why not? Um, I think they're just too far, too far to the right. And too far to the right has been an accusation levelled at Nigel Farage again this week. At the weekend, you said, quote, we have a growing number of young people in this country who do not subscribe to British values, who in fact loathe much of what it stands for. When you're pushing it, the way that you were referring to there was... British Muslims. I've just listened to a speech there where you said that you hate sectari sectarianism. Mm. But statements like what you've just made were incendiary. No. You're fueling no, divide, no, no, aren't no, no, you? No, no. Putting your finger on a problem that many millions of people feel a sense of disquiet about. And I have to say, I thought those scenes following the recent local elections that we saw from Bradford, from Burnley, from Leeds and other places winning candidates standing entirely on a religious platform uh, and, you know, the cheering, the These pictures the weren't chance. the vast majority of British Muslims. I didn't... No, no, no. Hang on a second. Let's get back to where we started, shall we? You quoted me. A growing number of young British people, right? I am not suggesting for a minute that I'm here to take a fight to the religion, to the religion of Islam. What I'm saying is we have a phenomenon. A phenomenon here 
we're amongst the 18 to 24 year olds that are living in our inner cities and towns that they've been radicalized by calling it out and saying let's have a proper debate about it i reject completely that that's incendiary do you think you're the person to be making those arguments do you know what if i don't make these arguments who will the Conservatives, caught in the hop by their own election, are yet to select a candidate in Dover. Former soldier Mike Tapp is fighting for Labour. Go on, Andy, who is that? Uh, got the chap yeah. named Robin, head teacher in a school, I believe. Clearly a plan. No, he wasn't. I swear. How big an issue is reform? Uh, look, I don't take reform particularly seriously. Uh, Farage has said uh, a lot of things today, but he's not going to be delivering them. He's not standing. We're going to hopefully be in government, which means we have serious policy for these very serious issues. We're not a single issue party. But reform's legacy might not be realised through their own MPs, but the Conservatives. Are you 100% ruling out ever joining the Conservative Party, being a member of the Conservative Party, taking a seat as a Lord of the Conservative Party? I didn't know there was a Conservative Party. If you find it, do show me where it is. That's a nice answer, but you haven't answered the question. If at some point in time there was something that was centre-right, that believed in small business and free markets and border controls, I'd happily be a part of it, whatever its name was. OK, so that's an open invitation to the Conservative Party. <laughs> Should they swing towards your style of politics, <laughs> that you might join them? I think it's very unlikely. But not impossible. Nothing is impossible. The Reform Party, much like UKIP a decade ago, could win hundreds of thousands of votes, not get a single MP elected, and still shape Conservative politics for years to come.